Hi guys and welcome back to Pass and Move and for today's episode in the amazing AC Milan series we are back with Lazio uh, as promised of course and uh, we do have a, not only is it normally a tough game of course but uh, given the circumstances um, I think it's an even bigger one than usual so we're in 8th currently uh, but we do have a game in hand on the teams that are above us so if we do win today we go into 20 points uh, sends us into the Europa League spots and uh, of course we'll be uh, you know if we just had a better goal difference it would possibly send us into the Champions League spots as well so I think we're doing relatively decently but all depends on today's result uh, we've definitely improved overall um, I'm gonna show you what happened since the last time around uh, but Lazio themselves are trying to avoid relegation so it's a huge game for them as well uh, they want to try and start climbing up the table and be a little bit safer than they have been uh, they've pretty much had a quite a poor start uh, just as we have had um, I think we've been inconsistent more than anything but I'm starting to see signs of consistency so I think uh, some of the tactical tweaks which again I'll show you in just a moment uh, have been working and so I think uh, you know I think things are on the up but uh, it all depends on today and uh, you know both teams have a lot to play for so that makes it just a, a very interesting fixture to, to, to play against so Napoli as you can tell leading the, the table uh, but in terms of what happened since the last episode, so we showed you that game against Spal, a 2-1 win. Managed to beat uh, this Europa League team that I'm not even going to bother mentioning. Uh, it was a 1-0 though, it's a nice little 3 points. Lost to Inter 2-0 though, and uh, considering that this result sent, sent them to the top of the table, um, it was not as bad as it looks, I suppose. I mean, it's terrible to lose a derby, even worse when you're at home. Uh, but at the same time, for a team who are challenging for the title to beat us 2-0 isn't that bad. It was more disappointing how we lost. We didn't seem to uh, necessarily be able to finish any of our chances. I think we had three clear-cut chances in the last 10 minutes of the game. So if we just finished those chances, we might have even ended the game as winners. Uh, but my players uh, let me down hugely. And unfortunately, I guess we left it a little bit too late for uh, us to change the game around. But I made the tactical tweak after this Inter game because it kind of inspired me to change things around. I realized during the 80 minutes we never really created anything of note. And the only three clear-cut chances we created was towards the end when I pushed my team one and sent them into an overload. So I felt like, um, you know, as most of you might have been suggesting, uh, that we were being a bit too defensive and so I've switched things around and uh, it seems to have been working. So we managed to beat Verona 3-1, uh, pretty much, uh, you know, relatively easy game. Bonaventura scored in the first minutes, the best way to start really. We got all three points away from home. We beat FC Copenhagen as well, 1-0 through a Ricardo Rodriguez penalty. Uh, Atlanta, 2-0 result, a very comfortable one with Kessie and Bonaventura again on the score sheet in both halves to just wrap things up for us. Against Torino, a very convincing 4-1 win uh, and it all came after half time as well. To, so I guess the half time team talk worked. But yeah, we do face uh, Lazio today, so let's see what happens uh, in terms of the actual tactical tweaks like mentioned we'll have a look you can have a look at it now pretty much still the same formation uh, it seems to me to be the one that makes the most sense and so I don't think I will be switching to a 4-3-3 uh, we'll be sticking with this but we've made some changes like going to a standard mentality a flexible team shape we've also added the roam from positions and dribble less instructions I've changed Bonici to be a cover and have had uh, Romanoli as well as Musacchio both as stoppers. It seems to make the most sense uh, when you're playing a three-man backline to just have the passing lanes a little bit different uh, so they can connect things together a little bit easier. And of course the stoppers help uh, to make up for the vacated areas here on the flanks as well as uh, these ones here from Locatelli and uh, Kessi. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. The, the midfield stays relatively the same. We've added, we've asked Kessie to be a bit more defensive, I suppose, by telling him to mark tighter. Kind of this is just an advanced forward still, and we've got both inside forwards. Uh, what we will be doing is working towards a different, uh, some tactical different roles. So I, I, I want to have an advanced playmaker here, so there's a bit of more of a creative side on this side, as the same way as we do have a deep line playmaker here. I also want to switch the box box midfielder to a central midfielder on support because, uh, like I mentioned before, the box box midfielder roams a bit too much and he can often leave Locatelli isolated. Of course, Locatelli has the three central defenders to, uh, to help him with, but in terms of the actual midfield, we still do need Kessie holding back a little bit less. I think, actually, in terms of his uh, role ability, when you go on the central midfielder on support, it's not the end of the world. It's, you know, he's just gone half a star down, so it's not too bad as uh, asking him to do any other role. But yeah, we'll keep him on box-to-box -box midfielder for now. He's in good form. 
uh, so why not? But yeah, uh, in terms of who misses out today's game, pretty much a full starting 11, uh, you know, full strength starting 11 other than Ricardo Rodriguez who's injured. And Lucas uh, who's, you know, not injured but he's lacking a little bit in fitness. I don't want to risk him getting any injuries uh, for potentially more important games. And so I've asked uh, both Locatelli and Aaron to come in today and uh, hopefully they can perform and uh, get the job done for us. But anyways, I think we can go ahead and submit the team now and get into the game, let the players warm up and see how Lazio set up as well. <clears throat> of course, if we want any chances of uh, qualifying for the Champions League, which is the aim that I asked my squad to do, uh, you know, the board expect Europa League football, but if we get Champions League football, it's even better in terms of our finances and attendances, of course, you know, more supporters will come to us. Uh, but at the same time, of, you know, we just want to improve as quickly as possible so we can challenge next season for the title. I think, you know, there's some dead wood in the squad that needs uh, some depth issues, really. But our first team 11 are quite a strong one and definitely one capable of winning the league if we put some consistent form together. But anyways, uh, Lazio have gone with another uh, five-man backline as well. They've got the three centre-backs in Wallace, uh, Stefan and Tonelli, a very decent three-man backline. They've got Lucas Lever protecting them. Uh, Gazardi and Lukaku also on the flanks, very decent fullbacks. Uh, you've got uh, Milkunovic, I think, which is everyone who's trying to buy him at the moment. Uh, and Lulic as well. And then you've got Nani and Immobile as the strikers. It's a bit weird that they've bought Nani. He is the Portuguese Nani, isn't he? Does this happen in real life already? Oh, they just loaned him. I don't think this is a game that loaned him, though, I think. Hmm. I have to look at that. I honestly thought that Nani's still at Valencia in real life as well. But anyways, uh, let's get into today's game. We're at home. We should be the favourites, as the you know team talk suggests, I suppose. Uh, but more importantly, we need to make our mark on the field and prove that we're favourites, and not just uh, say we're favourites. That's you're definitely going to give us a bunch of competition. Let's show you the highlights and show you the replays as well. So uh, as always, just in case you're new. Uh, 3D highlights and uh, sorry 2D highlights and 3D replays so that way we get a bit of both the best of both worlds really um, you know because everyone has their preferences so this way we cater to both people but anyways uh, let's see how things get going again get an early uh, highlight here and hopefully it's in our favor Aaron finds Bonaventura well he cuts inside to square it to Kessie who uh, spreads the ball really well to Abate and he can find his winger well if he does here. Eventually goes to Suso, who's no longer free now though. We're keeping the ball well now and uh, as the shorter passing instruction you know, suggests, we're trying to keep the ball as much as possible. Aaron on overlap though, can deliver the box. Suso's there and it's 1-0 within two minutes. And we couldn't have asked, or I couldn't have asked for a better start. 84% possession. Uh, and the early stages suggest that we're doing really well with the ball and finishing off chances that apparently the game doesn't consider a clear-cut chance but I would say if uh, Aaron's putting a ball on the plate for you like that then you really should be finishing it. This is good all-round possession play and Kessie does well to find Aaron on the overlap. We're definitely taking advantage of the fact that they've only got one wide man. Suso creeps up at the back post even though there's two players there and you'd argue that Lazio's defenders should do better and that's probably why the uh, game doesn't consider that to be a clear-cut chance, but uh, either way, 1-0, and all we have to do is build on this performance, and we might have another opportunity to do that here. Bate with the throw-in. Locatelli's there to receive it well. Uh, poor ball, but uh, hopefully we can stop Nani from advancing. He's going to run our defence by himself, really. He's got teammates, but he's not trying to find them, and uh, we'll take that all day from Nani without a doubt. Bit worrying that no one really necessarily put too much pressure on him, but then again, he wasn't really going anywhere and uh, relatively safe. Set piece. Kalinic is there and he scores Nikola. That's 2 0 within 10 minutes, and uh, my players are fired up for today's game. But I would love a third to really wrap it up before half time. This is, uh, I love this, the set piece I've got my players on right now. I've given. Uh, in case you're wondering, I can probably show you after the game, but I've really, I, I'm, I'm a fan of uh, leaving the set piece taker to make a decision. You have to trust the decision making as well as the corner taking ability. So I like to leave them unmixed, but then I like to give them as many options as possible to pick out whoever they want. So as you saw there, I had someone attacking the near post, someone attacking the far post, I think. 
Uh, I've also got someone who's challenging the keeper, someone who's running in from deep, someone who's staying outside the box to pick up the pieces. Uh, so it really gives the set piece taker as many options as possible to identify the opposition's weakness and deliver the cross that he thinks would be the most effective. Uh, and I think if uh, maybe even on camera I showed you Bonici scoring uh, two goals or three even through set pieces and pretty much saved our game. Uh, so I think it's quite important to, to, to give your set piece taker those alternatives and it seems to be working at least. I've never really made a set piece that's worked before so it's kind of pleasing. It could just be the AC Milan players are really good at taking set pieces as well as finishing the chances from them. Um, Ooh, Wallace giving us the ball here. Bonaventura can deliver. Nicolas there and it's 3-0. The assistant manager runs back to the centre circle, which means it's not offside. And Lazio absolutely falling apart here. We've only had one clear-cut chance, one half chance, but we've got three goals. And it's that type of deadly finishing that I want to see from our players. It's a very decent ball from Aaron, but he's asked a bit too much from Bonaventura. Wallace's first touch is poor, so Bonaventura picks up the pieces, quickly delivers as well. And Nicolas faster than uh, the Lazio centre-backs as well, proving Nicola, because really, at this point, Nicola and our backup striker, uh, Silva, are very, very close in terms of ability. It's actually very difficult. I think by next season, I really will have to have a two-striker man formation because the pair of them are absolutely going to rip the league apart if we play them together. Uh, but at the moment, I feel like Nicola edges him just a tiny bit. So once Silva catches up in terms of his uh, ability, then we can definitely switch to a two-man formation. Um, and uh, maybe maybe next season. I want to try and avoid messing around formations. I quite like this one in truth. Uh, but uh, let's see how things go. We just have to keep it as this for now. Bonaventura with a fourth. Oh, I wasn't sure if he was going to finish that or not. But it was too good of a delivery from Abate. Too tempting of a uh, delivery from Abate for Bonaventura to not finish. But doing so well here, honestly, across every department. Locatelli with that deep line playmaker ball, really. And Suso, just a really good intelligence to find Abate. And uh, he delivers from the byline like we ask him to. I think I have to, be, uh, I have to give full credit to my wingbacks today because they're putting hell of a shift. Very important for them to you know, uh, to perform today because uh, Lazio are playing just one wide man on either flank. So the overlap from our wing backs was really important today. I was wondering whether they'll step up and they definitely have an assist for either one of them. And uh, more importantly, the wingers on either flank finishing off the chances as well as Nicola, who's been a key, key man in today's game. So cannot really say anything other than I'm very happy. There's no other team talk. I can give my players here. They're not complacent. We're 4-0 up. Just keep doing what you're doing. And uh, the better the goal difference, the better for us because we might actually sneak into the Champions League football. I think this four-goal lead gives us a plus eight goal difference, if I'm not mistaken. I think we walked into, a plus four, into, walked into this game with a plus four goal difference. So plus eight is decent, but I'm, if I'm not mistaken, the teams above us have plus 10 and plus 12 or something along the lines of that. So we will need a bigger win to sneak into the Champions League places. But the point is, we should definitely be getting the three points here today. And uh, that means, you know, we should be climbing into Europa League spots and being level on points uh, with the Champions League spots, which is arguably, of course, more important. So anyways, we're on the counter-attack. Nicola, through to Suso. What can he do here? Is he going to go by himself? He does, um, quite stupidly. Instead of running into the box, he tries to shoot from long range and he fails in converting that. But I think uh, I do have to warn my players about complacency by the looks of that early chance in the set piece. Uh, anyways, we can start to look to make some substitutions. Players that are tired that we should try and take off. So Bate, for example, is the first player who's tired. Nice little opportunity, 30 minutes for... Uh, Calabria to actually try and do something. Again, the set-piece delivery and Musacchio scores for us. I'm just going to start calling him Matteo because I'm pretty sure I'm <laughs> destroying his name. But that's, again, the set-piece decision. Uh, and uh, Suso made the right call. That's one hell of a delivery. Again, nice little replay here from the 3D as well. Look at him just rise and score. He's got a man who's supposed to be marking him, but he runs away from him pretty much. And... Uh, Converts the chance and we're 5-0 up and I'm loving the goals. The more that come, the better. I know we've pretty much wrapped up the three points, but like I mentioned, goal difference seems to be a huge thing this time around. And considering our poor start, I think we've done really well to actually get into the Europa League spots. We were quite inconsistent. Um, but more importantly, we need to do better in the bigger games, I feel, because uh, if we're losing against Inter and Juventus and drawing against Roma, 
we definitely need to beat the bigger sides uh, better uh, so that we can actually get the points that are necessary. So, uh, Bonaventura coming off for Borini and we'll put on Hakan for Suso. And I think that's it. That's only really our last substitution. So, just trying to rest the good, the best performing players who are tired. And uh, our wingers definitely put in a shift today as well as our uh, wing backs, and that's why Calabria came on as well as Hakan and uh, Burini. But yeah, Burini is definitely a transfer that I want to get rid of, uh, rid of as soon as possible. He's coming in next season, I think. I'm not sure if it's uh, in January. I have to actually have a look at Kessie and Burini and see when they're coming in, whether it's January or next season. But I'm pretty sure it's in the summer. And if that's the case, we're keeping Kessie definitely. I mean, he is a quality player. But in terms of Barini, he's just a good player, or I think a decent player from a Serie A side, so it doesn't make sense to hold on to him. But of course, because he's just about to complete his transfer, it's going to be very difficult to sell him, but I'm going to try and loan him out and bring in an actual player uh, who's uh, better in terms of uh, depth. So, players are now looking complacent, so uh, I'm going to have to give them that complacency team talk that I'm not really fond of. Uh, not only because, you know, you you sometimes get weird reactions from your players but at the same time I just want to be able to say good job and I can't even do that because some of them are being complacent uh, but yeah I guess it's kind of a usual normal thing when you're one of the bigger teams so there you go our goal difference is plus nine uh, I guess the Serie A works differently I've actually I haven't had a look at the rules um, maybe it's uh, games played against or games scored results between the teams is what makes the difference that makes it even more important for us to defeat any of the bigger teams because if it comes down to it if we're level on points for example with Napoli but they've beaten us then we're screwed um, it's a bit weird to have results between teams being the league sorting rules I guess it makes a bit more sense than goals difference but I don't know I just feel like it should be goal difference uh, then results between teams and then goals scored that seems to make more sense if you ask me but either way uh, we'll just have to make sure that we try and uh, separate ourselves by points um, I'm not sure why we're under Fiorentina because we haven't played them yet but uh, Inter did beat us so that makes sense but either way it's good to see that we're level on points with these teams here and we can continue climbing the table just four points off the top who knows we might actually even be able to challenge for the title this season so let's see how it goes um, but yeah, definitely top, top performance from the players and I'm so happy we caught that on camera as well. Deserved result. Uh, Europa League, I already showed you those three results there, but obviously that these are top of the table, so you can just have a look at how it shapes up here. Uh, likes of Everton, Villarreal, Atletico Bilbao, Fenerbahce, Prague, Moscow, uh, Arsenal, um, you know, very big teams here and we're gonna have to do well to reach the final but I think we definitely got the squad for it Sevilla definitely gonna be tough in terms of our group we should definitely be getting out of our group but yeah we're top here with a nice goal difference of four Galatasaray, Hoffenheim, Club Brew, all very difficult teams PSV, Zenit, uh, Lazio here as well Leon, very very difficult teams but I think we've got the squad to go all the way over here in the Europa League um, so yeah, that's the fixture for October. So now we're going to be looking at the fixtures for November. So we've got from Copenhagen to Sampdoria. So just the five games here. Uh, I don't want to show you Europa League games, like I mentioned, until things start to heat up. Uh, so more important games against Bologna, Croton and Sampdoria. And it looks like it might make more sense to actually show you this game against Sampdoria as well once more because uh, those other games don't seem as important. We've got Calag Cagliari and Croton both a little bit far for my liking. Sampdoria are a bit close to us and so it might prove to be a more important game. Uh, Sampdoria are mid-table as well, expect to be. Cagliari and Croton are supposed to be relegation zone candidates, so yeah, I think definitely we'll probably be showing you the Sampdoria. Definitely probably also makes sense, doesn't it? Those of you that are interested, uh, let me show you the set piece. Uh, so I have, the, whenever I do the takers, Apparently I haven't set it up this time unless something's gone wrong. But I actually have, you know, right foot on the left side, left foot on the right side. I feel like that's better, but I think the players have pretty much sorted themselves out. And I don't think I necessarily have to tell them who to take what because they've done a good job so far. Um, but here's how I set up. <coughs> Sorry about that the corner attacking so I've got the wing backs staying back for sure I've got the you know mid central midfielder on the on the left 
just uh, staying back only if he's needed. If he's not needed, he can run forward. Uh, we've got someone uh, standing on the far post. We've got our three central defenders. One attacking the near post. One attacking the far post. One attacking the ch challenging the goalkeeper so he can't come out for the ball. We've got the striker attacking from deep. And we've got uh, the winger lurking outside the area. Also given the option of a short player. When you leave this option on mixed, that means he won't necessarily always go short. So don't be worried about that. Uh, as you saw, of course, during the game, both those deliveries came into the box. But yeah, it just lets the... Uh, drag someone out of the, from the opposition out of the box and at the same time gives our players an option where we can mix uh, move their defenders around if need be and deliver a better ball uh, if our initial set piece taker doesn't see anything uh, out there so yeah you can definitely set it up i got it on the right and the left the same thing seems to be working but more importantly you don't have to do it exactly like this i think the more important message is uh, letting your set piece player actually make the decision himself if you keep it on mixed and just set your team up in a way that you like uh, I think he'll be able to find them relatively well so yeah I think that's all for today's episodes of course if you did enjoy it, then please do hit the like button and subscribe for more daily football manager 2018 content and of course I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below as always tell me why you like it why you don't like it what you think will work what you don't think will work I'd uh, love to hear it all and uh, again once again as always guys thank you all very much for watching.